Hey everybody, welcome back to the K2N Online Paddle School. We are back here on YouTube and today we are on part two of a multi-part series about preventing power slippage in the outrigger canoe stroke. This is also applicable for all types of canoe strokes. If you have two hands and you're wielding a single blade, a lot of the things that we're talking about are universal. This video has been slightly delayed because I've been working on refurbishing our club's OC6 here in Hernando. And I can tell you, sanding 45 foot worth of canoe dozens of times takes a tremendous amount of effort. These videos have been put on the back burner. Thank you all for supporting the channel. We have reached 2,000 subscribers here on the YouTube, which is a great milestone. And it's all thanks to the support of you all watching. If you're not subscribed, please do so. The next goal is getting to 3,000. In the first video, we talked about creating shapes within the stroke. This predefines the leverages that we will have throughout the stroke. The catch is not the most important part of the stroke because if the blade goes into the water, that is one aspect. But if we are out of position and we create poor shapes, we are locked into poor leverages. No matter how the blade interacts with the water, if our body has poor leverage mechanics, the amount of force that we find on the blade will always be limited. The setup is the most important part. The shapes that we can create, predefine how strong you can be throughout the stroke. If you have not seen that video, we will have it linked right above. So click, watch that, then come back to this video. So now that we understand creating shapes, the next aspect that we want to talk about is holding those shapes throughout the stroke. A great way to think of your interaction with the water through the paddle is to think of it as a game of tug of war. As you introduce your blade into the water, there is force that is found behind the blade. There is force that is found on your hands and your entire muscular and skeletal system. Your ability to win this tug of war, to control the forces that want to disrupt your movement, defines your skill level and ability to move a boat quickly. Understanding this tug of war gives you a keen eye in understanding paddlers and their technique as they complete a stroke. Seeing paddlers lose that tug of war means that they are inherently limited in their ability to move the boat forward. Today we're talking about holding the shapes and winning that tug of war. If you begin to break shape as you're interacting with the water, the water is winning the tug of war and pulling you out of position. So let's look at some of the shapes that we want to try and hold throughout the stroke and what it looks like to break those shapes and to lose the tug of war. As we talked about in the last video and previous videos, right, we have our defined power triangle. This bottom arm is extended. This top arm is slightly bent to help facilitate a positive blade angle. And I've created this power triangle between my hands and my torso. As I complete the stroke, I want to maintain this power triangle throughout the interaction with the water. So as I go all the way through to the end of the stroke, I have not lost this power triangle from the start of the stroke to the end of the stroke. This is easily defined by looking at the distance from the blade to my sternum. As we start the stroke, there is a predefined distance here, and we want to maintain this distance as we complete the stroke like so. Breaking shape would be bending at your elbows early into the stroke. What this does is this is going to pull the blade closer to my body. So as my elbow bends, I have minimized the gap between my sternum and the shaft here, meaning I have broken the shape that I started with by bending this elbow too soon. Extending the top arm too early does the same thing. The shaft is further away from me, and as I pull it, the lever comes towards me, and ever so slightly, this paddle is now closer to me, that shape has been broken. The top hand is driving down to ensure that this distance stays far from sternum to shaft, and that we are holding this position throughout the stroke. 
This is another very common broken shape that paddlers will go through is as they start the stroke, they do not have a defined pathing with their top hand downward in order to engage and hold this shape. What will happen is the paddle will go in and they are thinking, I need to pull this blade straight back to me like so. So the blade goes in and you will see paddlers, their first movement is that their top hand and their bottom hand travel backwards like so. You can see that as my elbows bend, my paddle gets closer to me and I have broken the shape early in the stroke. This is the most common way to lose the tug of war. The moment the blade touches the water, there's a tremendous amount of force and we have to move very distinctly and use our body very specifically in order to win this tug of war. The easiest thing for our body to do is to relax, lose the tug of war, and let the boat glide coming forward pull the blade towards us like so. Then you'll see paddlers go through the stroke and at the end of the stroke, they'll start to push down. As the paddle is close to me, now there is almost no pressure on this top hand and it's easy to push it down to get that leverage. it is hardest to push down in the front because we have the most amount of leverage. This is where we have to be strongest in this tug of war because the water will just rip your paddle from your hand. We've created a powerful shape and now we have to drive down into the water to maintain and hold this shape throughout the stroke. Holding the shape allows you to maximize your power transfer into the water. We use the upper body to create the shape specifically so we have the leverages to hold that shape throughout the stroke. If we start with a poor shape, there is no shape for us to hold during the middle of the stroke and the paddle is gonna go all over the place and that power transfer is going to be very limited. As the top hand drives down, we wanna think about this bottom hand also driving down. We don't wanna pull with this arm. Again, we break this shape too early in the stroke by pulling and initiating with the elbow. Thinking about the bottom hand pushing down ensures that you are holding this shape here and I maintain the same power triangle to the end of the stroke. As we're disengaging from the water, now we can break and move these joints to exit the water because we're not holding or being held in a tug of war match, right? As we go into the air, the stroke is easy, we can relax, we can now break our shapes before we set up those shapes again, ultimately to hold them as we're engaging the water. Water gives you an equal amount of resistance that you put into it. The more force that you can find in the water, the harder that tug of war match becomes. Great visual example of water matching the resistance that you put into it is jumping from a diving deck and belly flopping versus diving in properly and kind of knifing through the water. If you create this big surface area and you flop, the water will match that resistance and it will hurt like hell. As we take each stroke, we have the opportunity to find a tremendous amount of force with great leverage advantages and deal with it properly. But very commonly, you will see paddlers haphazardly set up into the stroke and not be equipped to maximize those forces that they have to deal with. And the body is very good at dodging those things. One of the major conundrums about paddling in general, you have to train yourself to take a movement pattern that is most difficult over and over. The human body and the human mind is pretty efficient. As we go through movement, we want to try to find the easiest way to do it. As we put the blade in the water, if my top hand comes back, this is much easier, right? As I go through this movement, I don't have to work as hard and it's not as difficult and arduous. And so many paddlers will find the path of least resistance. And this is what hinders their long-term progression. You have to actively force yourself 
to set up into specific leverage positions to deal with the most amount of force with the highest amount of efficiency that is met through the water. If at any point you try to dodge that and make the stroke easy, the boat speed goes down and your potential is hindered. Holding the shapes is a crucial piece of the puzzle. If you break shape throughout the stroke, you're dodging that pressure and not dealing with it. And those are opportunities to get better that are being sidestepped. Use these tools to your advantage to set up in the stroke and deal with the most amount of pressure and win the tug of war match to make that canoe fly. So that's it in holding shape as we complete the stroke with a few common errors that I typically see while doing video reviews on the K2N online paddle school.com. We have 200 videos that help you understand and break down these nuances and putting your energy into the water properly to maximize your race performance. The final part of the series will be understanding the directional forces that go into the stroke. We create the shapes with the upper body. We're holding the shapes with the upper body. Now we're thinking about the other aspects of using your hips and and legs to maximize what you're doing while holding that shape, as well as tensioning the paddle and bringing all these ideas together. Thank you guys so much for supporting this YouTube channel. Again, 2000 subscribers is a huge milestone. I am so thankful to this community for reaching out, watching these videos. I get messages all the time. It means the world to me. So again, if there's anything that you wanna see on this channel or on the K2NOnlinePaddleSchool.com, feel free to reach out anytime via email, live chat function. You can add me on Facebook, whatever, right? I am part of this community and I enjoy spending time interacting with all of you. We'll see you guys probably midweek next week. I'm gonna try and pump out a few extra videos to make up for the two and a half weeks of no videos. And I'll see you guys then.